Welcome to Cataclysm Now, it's Ryan, and uh, tonight we're going to start on part two of our playthrough of The Deadly Woods, uh, designed by Ted Racer and published by Revolution Games. We're on turn three, uh, which is December 20th through the 21st. Just put replacements uh, here on the board. Uh, one infantry replacement for the Americans, which they put on the uh, 23rd Regiment of the 2nd Infantry Division, and then the uh, Germans... Um, Sent some replacements to the 560th Infantry Regiment, and then they also um, flipped a um, Kampfgruppe of the 116th Panzer Division. Uh, we also put down a delay marker. The Americans put it in the town of Wilts, and uh, that's going to prevent the um, Germans from easily potentially circumventing Bastong or even... They're not likely to, but shifting their um, direction to the south. Um, here we've got the chits that are going to be available. They're going to be thrown into the cup. Um, the Whoever has initiative, which the Germans have this turn, uh, gets to pull their first chit, essentially. And then the rest is up to luck. Actually, one of the American chits is... Um, the reinforcement that's held in hand and can be used... Um, to replace one of these if they're drawn. So the Germans are going to go ahead and they're going to do, um, they're going to start with a move chit. So that way, we can reorient ourselves here. They can go ahead and max it, because odds are they're going to be able to um, move or attack. So they're going to do a movement um, and pull up the uh, second SS and the second or 62nd Infantry Division in the 18th, have them um, move up uh, and be able to maximize their forward movement uh, to push on. So the Americans um, have spread out here. They're, it's kind of risky in terms of they have a lot of coverage, especially from 101st and the 82nd Airborne Divisions, um, but they are prey to, especially the 101st here, uh, prey to being struck by the second and uh, layer panzer divisions. So the net is cast around the German um, bulge. They've advanced about 30 miles with their deepest penetration from the west wall here. Um, not so much success uh, in the north, but uh, with that movement shit, the um, Germans are really looking to maximize um, getting these panzer units uh, forward uh, to strike. So we'll go ahead, throw the uh, chits in the cup. We'll start pulling and uh, we'll check in to see where we stand. Okay, very little combat that first uh, action round because it was a move chip. Uh, there was some combat between the uh, two Kampfgruppe of the 2nd Panzer Division wind up uh, inflicting losses on the 501st Regiment of the 101st Airborne, pushing them back through uh, Bastong onto this ridge. And then the um, A Kampfgruppe uh, moved forward towards Bastong. It's going to put the 323rd Regiment out of supply, uh, should combat happen, uh, but they are on this ridge here. It's the only combat that happened, but the Germans were able to shuffle some troops around. Let's go here to the southwest part, or southeast part of the board. Um, where we're moving up some regiments. Of the 276, uh, 212, and the 352nd, um, the 5th uh, Falschmjäger is still uh, pinning down this lone regiment of the 28th Division. Um, I changed the positions of the 26th Division um, along here. Uh, pulled back from Breton, because um, one of the regiments was rather exposed shifted one regiment from uh, Hoythalais back over the river and then uh, pulled back the 78th to defend Hoythalais. So basically holding action here. They don't have many reserves, but uh, use the lair. Um, and they're going to try to circumvent and maybe hit Bastong um, from the east and potentially the southeast. Now, historically, um, some units were able to bypass Bastong and continue on, but here they're throwing up some substantial roadblocks. We move forward the 116th um, to potentially push on against the 30th and then 
up here in the north, um, we were able to uh, move the 2nd SS Panzer along with a regiment of the 62nd up to threaten um, oops, uh, Vilslum. Hit on it. Um, it's stubborn 106th. Um, and they were able to pull out of the St. Vith pocket. And then we've got the 12th SS and the 1st SS and the 9th SS uh, moving west um, of Malmody. Uh, the 12th SS did cross uh, the Amblief River um, just temporarily. Their axis of advance um, isn't going to be northward, but they'll help alleviate the, um, the defender shift uh, for the, this combat command of the 7th Armor. Um, so if they had attacked just from here, then they would do a, a column shift. But because they were able to cross um, from Malmody, uh, they'll help alleviate that. So yeah, um, just a quick update. We'll go ahead and keep pulling chits and see if the Germans can make more headway. Okay, the next chit that was pulled was the German One Army, which allows them to choose... Uh, one sector, move all the units in it, and then have combat. Um, so I chose the 5th Panzer Army, the middle sector here, and the 2nd uh, Armored Division was able to push back the regiment of the 101st, um, inflicting a, a step loss as they retreated through zone of control. And then the 506 of the 101st was pushed back um, just south of Bastogne, back to the ridge here. So the Lair and the second armored divisions are uh, wrapping themselves around Bastogne, but not quite threatening the supply as of yet. 26th held in place. Uh, they weren't really any, um, in a position to make any attacks. The 116th Panzer Division here was able to push back uh, two regiments of the 30th Infantry Division. Um, I don't know if this will be a good or bad thing. We'll see how the chits are pulled. I think it'll be good for this turn because the 116th has now crossed over into the 6th Panzer Army now, so that falls under their purview. So potentially, um, if the 6th Panzer uh, chit is pulled, they'll be able to be activated again. The Germans didn't have as, uh, as much luck, though, here uh, at the uh, Vilsalm. Um, they uh, rolled a one on the uh, two to one uh, CRT and uh, took a loss on a, a regiment of the 560th um, Infantry Division. So that would be nice if they were able to um, propel them back over the river uh, and then also cross over, potentially facilitating a um, a major breakthrough along the road um, leading through Vermont. But it did not come to pass. So that is the update for the second chit pull. Uh, let's go ahead and um, see where else we can go. Okay, the Americans pulled a, a move chit so they can move all of their units um, regardless of the sector. They aren't really bound by sectors the way that the um, Germans are. And then any armor that didn't move can attack adjacent units. So. We uh, bunched up um, the 82nd uh, Airborne, two regiments uh, across the river and occupied Bertong here. And then we sent up two regiments to block uh, the crossroads um, here just uh, northeast of uh, La Roche. And then the 30th, uh, the entire uh, entirety of the 30th Division here at uh, Manhay. Some successes here. Uh, we're also able to shift uh, the 501st, join the 506th on the ridge here, just south uh, west of Bastong. But uh, in a rather bold move, the um, 10th Armored uh, struck out and uh, hit the uh, B Kampfgruppe of the Lair Panzer Division and uh, sent it back to. Uh, didn't advance into the square, but that means, well, it doesn't really disrupt um, the, the ACOM group because they'll still be able to trace supply, but it just knocks back and uh, disrupts uh, their envelopment plan for Bastong. Uh, they took a similar um, tact uh, 
up here um, just outside of Malmody. Uh, two combat commands of the 7th Armored um, counterattacked against the 12th SS. Um, it was a one-to-one -one, uh, aided by the um, artillery chit that the, um, the Americans have access to. These are potent. They're incredibly powerful. The Germans uh, have uh, naval, naval Werfer and uh, normal artillery assets per um, sector, uh, per, per army, the 7th, 5th Panzer, and 6th Panzer. And those are only used once per turn. However, for the Americans, they reset um, every action round. Um, so they have uh, a lot of artillery assets to use, and, and they help them with the counterattack against the 12th SS. So they... Um, a combat command move forward, blocking um, any movement um, across the river here from Malmody. So not a bad turn for the uh, Americans. We'll go ahead and uh, keep pulling shits and see what the Germans can do or what the Americans could do. Um, kind of the beauty of chip hole system. Alrighty, the Germans drew a 5th Panzer Army. Uh, they were able to do... Uh, movement and then combat with armor and then they um, subsequently um, pulled a should have this here um, pulled a, a combat well it was a move slash combat but since they'd already done movement for the Germans um, they've got two move slash combat chits um, but they can't use both of them for the same action. So if you do movement first, you have to do combat. If you do combat first, you have to do movement the second time it's pulled. The Americans aren't limited by that. Um, Bastong took uh, some of a battering. Um, they, uh, the 101st, um, or the 502nd Regiment, uh, took a step loss um, over the, the two action rounds, but the uh, elements of the lair and the 2nd Panzer both took hits. Um, so... Bastong is a bleeding uh, these two divisions. Up here, we've got the 116th move forward and tried to um, assault the 30th infantry in Manhei. Uh, they wind up taking a step loss. Um, and then also here, we had uh, the 2nd SS with elements of the 560th infantry division um, and the 62nd, um, they were repulsed as well trying to cross uh, the Salm. The 9th SS, I'll go up here a little bit. The 9th SS uh, tried to cross um, at uh, Trois Pont and uh, they were repulsed. Uh, the only two instances of successes were the 1st SS and the 12th SS. They were able to recross the Amblieve um, just uh, north uh, west of Malmody. And they're going to see if they can make some inroads. At this point, uh, if this is successful, they're obviously trying to push more westward as the roads, I mean, optimally um, to the west here. Uh, Denant and Givet were the two sort of options, um, especially if they could break through Bastong and uh, cross uh, this large river here. But obviously they're being frustrated by the airborne divisions and the 30th. However, um, you know, they're looking for the soft path. So if they can cross here, and we only have these two combat commands um, opposing two full divisions, it's possible that their plans could switch and that they could threaten Liege. Uh, if that's, if they if the Germans are able to get a foothold there, um, that could take, that could prove difficult for the, for the Allies to retake. But we'll see where it goes and where uh, the rest of the chits uh, take us. Okay, that brings us to the end of turn three through December 21st. Really, uh, the Germans are just having a, a tough time of it. They're rolling a lot of ones, um, which is either producing um, either no effect if it's a three to one, or a lot of times if it's a one to one or a two to one, they're, they're taking casualties. So a lot of these Panzer divisions um, are beginning to be worn down. You can see here the 9th SS has taken a loss, 12th SS has taken a loss, the 16th Panzer division has taken a loss. So 
the, it's, it's beginning to wear on them, uh, and they don't have a lot of armored replacements coming. Um, in terms of reinforcements, though, because they don't control Bastong, they lost out on the 11th Panzer, but they did have the 10th SS, um, which came on uh, off of uh, K here, and um, moving it towards um, just south of the 5th Corps. Uh, the Americans, uh, let's see, what else would happen? So the Americans were pushed back just east of the Salm. Uh, the remnants of the 106th fell back, um, but their position was solidified later on. The last shit that was pulled, uh, the reinforcements came in. So the 84th um, came piping down from Liège. And then we also had a um, armored brigade uh, from the British um, cross the Meuse and set up... Um, some blocking positions uh, right over here. The 10th uh, Armored launched another counterattack down here in the south uh, outside of Bastong and pushed back this um, Kampfgruppe of the Lair. Um, Bastong is not going very well for them. And then in addition, the 3rd um, Armored Division with uh, a um, depleted um, combat command of the 7th struck and hit uh, the 12th SS and pushed them back uh, to Malmody uh, up here. Which, uh, in this case, does threaten uh, the 3rd Panzer Grenadier uh, because they pushed off and they the, the Germans uh, thought that they established a nice... Um, bridgehead over uh the Amblieve, but with the counter attack of the third armor that is now threatened yeah they will be out of supply unless they can move something up there so we have a rescue element going on here um the 10th ss don't know which way they're gonna go um but the best hope perhaps right now um is the germans to break through here um, they have the 30th remnants of the 106th and the entirety of the 84th uh, to contend with. But um, perhaps with the higher armored strengths of the Panzer divisions, they may be able to break through. I feel like there's a little hope um, around Bastong. Um, if they're able to get a couple of uh, replacements and then um, strike again, and if the die roll cooperates, then perhaps... Maybe even um, they can bring in some of the 79th um, or these um, uh, two, three divisions here. Now we've got the 18th uh, elements of the 62nd and the 560th, which need to come up and they'll be able to at least absorb losses. But base, I, I, it's the German advance is starting to peter out. Um, they're still navigating opportunities um, to exploit, um, but by and large, the momentum that carried them uh, for, for the first two turns um, has largely evaporated uh, because now just a lot of allied forces are gonna be coming on. So the Germans have to be careful they don't push themselves too much because although their um, attacks have petered out, they still have two victory cities um, and then the Allies will have to take that back. Actually, let me double check what the victory conditions are for the, the campaign game. I know the Germans are. Campaign scenario. So if they have at least three victory point hexes, the German player canceled. Yeah, so there's a, on turn 11, there's a withdrawal of SS formations. So if they cancel with the withdraw, withdrawal, Then, if they have three victory point hexes, they'll win. And if they have at least two, if the withdrawal was not canceled. So essentially, depending on what they're going to accomplish, they, they probably want to get another one. But if not, if they at least hold on to two and they don't cancel, then they, they still may, may be able to win the campaign. So, at some point, the Germans are going to have to let up. 
But we are going to continue on to turn four because uh, the game is not over yet, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, we've got the start of turn four, which covers December 22nd through December 23rd. Uh, it's historically when Patton's um, relief of Bastong Bang began, but it looks like that won't be happening uh, in this particular playthrough. We had uh, some reinforcements come on the board. Um, the Germans um, had a uh, step come towards the 5th uh, Fallschirmjäger to help clear out this particular uh, stubborn regiment of the 28th Division. Uh, the Americans also had, um, swing down here, a um, reconstitution of the 9th uh, Armored Division, or at least a combat command. They also had a engineer unit come on. That's uh, for the, what corps was it? For the 8th Corps. And we had the surviving remnants of the 106th, so I wind up putting a um, putting the engineer unit there, which will aid immensely in the defense of that crossroad that the Germans are looking to take. Now for the composition of the Chits this turn, um, the Germans will have eight, and I'll have to decide between the 6th or the 5th Panzer Army, because um, if you could you could have put both of them in there if the Germans had captured Bastogne and St. Fifth, but because only one is captured, they can only have either or. So I'm going to have to decide whether or not... Um, the axis of advance should continue with the 5th Panzer Army or the 6th Panzer Army. And I'm leaning more towards the 6th Panzer Army just because they have more armored units and that's the greatest opportunity to break out against, um, uh, let's see, we've got the 7th Armored, 84th Infantry, and 106th, and the 30th. So those are better um, targets of opportunity to break out. Um, the 5th uh, Panzer Army. Oh, let's see, we've got the 2nd Panzer Division and the Lair, which have taken losses and are not really in a shape to break out. They most likely will either have to hold the line or have a bastong or retreat to this ridge line here. Um, so yeah, we'll most likely go with the 6th Panzer Army. Shit. So let's throw them in the cup and um, see what happens. All right, the Germans did a little bit of shuffling here in the north. Uh, they were able to extract or pull back the third Panzer Grenadier. Oh, well, actually, I'll leave uh, the paratroop uh, unit that was dropped on the first turn. Uh, they were able to move back here, uh, just north of Malmody. We were able to shuffle some regiments, or I should say some Kampfgruppe of the 10th SS and the 12th SS. Uh, pulled back the 1st SS and the 9th SS from north of the Amblieve and um, shifted them over to hit uh, Verbont. Verbomont? I'm saying that correctly. And then uh, we moved up the uh, some elements of the 62nd Infantry to guard uh, the crossing here at uh, Trapont. Butchering all these names, but say la vie. Um... <clears throat> Potentially working on a uh, an attack here, not necessarily to get at. I mean, that's a stretch to threaten Liège up to the northwest, but they could pull units away from um, this area here where the Germans really need to break out. Further along the line, bringing up Panzer units uh, and moving up. Um, Infantry units are move slowly. The Germans don't have motorized movement, but they do have this. Uh, they can do once per turn. Um, I put it on the 60 second because I want to make the division whole uh, while they're defending the flank. Um, moving these, keeping them centered so they can respond in either direction, north, south, or west, depending on how um, things develop. Same thing with the 79th here, moving down. Still a gap here in the line. Uh, with this delay marker here. But with the zone of control rules, you don't really need uh, units lined up per hex because in the rules you cannot, um, if you start in an enemy zone of control, you cannot move into 
the same zone of control or another zone of control. You can back out of it and then swing back in, but that costs movement points. Um, but the biggest development here, if you haven't noticed, is the uh, actual the fall of Baston. Kind of a critical juncture for the Germans, a decision point here. I could have fallen back to this ridge line here, but I felt that if the Germans abandoned that, then there would be no uh, further attempts to take Baston. So throwing in all the six panzers, uh, rocket artillery and conventional artillery, um, got them to a uh, one on the one to one column on the CRT. They actually rolled six. Uh, luck swung their way. So <clears throat> debated about whether or not to move the B comp group versus the A, but wound up moving the A, even though it's at reduced strength, because if not, uh, it would have left the northern wing of uh, Bestong open. And zones of control for armored units do not extend into uh, woods hexes. Um, so didn't want to leave this porous and open, uh, threatening the supply. So I put the weaker unit in Bastong, but they'll have the aided defense of some flanking units um, in terms of positioning and as well as being in the town. So that um, is what the Germans were able to do. Uh, actually, their first chit, forgot to mention earlier, was the move chit. Uh, so anything further, um, if it's combat oriented, they'll be in the best position to launch attacks. All right, after that first move chit, we had a German supply chit. Everything was in supply and good to go. Second one was a three formations. I wound up activating, um, maybe not the best use, but uh, activating the Foschermjäger and the um, Panzer Brigade here to clear out the remaining resistance. So the seventh army is clear. Um, now these units can be brought up and potentially put some pressure here on the south. Um, can't remember what I did with the armored. Um, oh, that's right. I did attack. Um, they tried to break out, not break out of Bastong, but put some pressure outside of Bastong, but there was a no effect there. Then the next chit was a supply chit, and then the next one was the 6th Army, which we'll go ahead and take a look here. The, I moved up uh, originally the this um, conf group of the 10th SS was guarding uh, the flank uh, at stave lot there but it moved north uh, to support the rest of the division's attack on the seventh armored uh, well the seventh armored third armored and um, elements of the seventh pushed them back to the north we still have the 62nd guarding uh, the flank here Contemplated moving this um, heavy tank battalion um, westward, but didn't want to leave this uh, undefended. The 5th Corps has access to a lot of firepower, so I don't want to make it tempting for the Americans to counterattack here. Um, with this chip pull, we couldn't launch any attacks with um, infantry or mechanized, so it had to have been led by panzers. Would have liked to put more pressure on um, Elsenborn and the twin towns of Rocherath and Krinkelet, but the chits aren't just allowing the, the Germans to do that. Uh, more importantly, if we swing to the west here, actually, nine, that wouldn't have been advantageous. Didn't launch attack against the 30th because... Actually, this turns not quite over. I still have to do this attack. Maybe I'll do that attack here uh, on camera. Um, the first SS was able to repel the uh, regiment of the 84th westward. And then the uh, first SS, or elements, the Piper, Kampfgruppe with the 9th Panzer, um, assaulted the town here of uh, Verbemont. But the combination of artillery, engineers, a ridge, and a town made it uh, a bloody one to two. And the um, Piper Kampf group wound up taking some heavy losses. So actually, let's go ahead and calculate what we can do for 
uh, this attack here. Zoom in a bit. All right, what do we have here? Uh, can't use this brigade, but we can use, because it was uh, part of the 6th Panzer north of that. We've got the 2nd SS, that's 15, plus 9, which is going to be uh, factors of 24. We've already used all their artillery. Well, actually they haven't. They've left the ship. Okay. What did I come up with again? Nine, 15, so 24. Um, and they have some uh, rocket artillery that they're going to throw. So that will become, uh, it was 24, but it's minus one because of the presence of the uh, town, Manhay. So it really becomes 26. Let's see if that makes a difference. And then the 30th is defending with nine. 13, so actually, well, 13, and then it becomes 14. So it's really a big one-to-one, -one, and there's no shift for the light woods. So we've got a one-to-one -one attack there, and a two on a one-to-one -one is no effect. So what you do about nothing there. So the 30th holds off against the combined efforts of the 116th and the 2nd SS. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, continue with the turns and um, see if the Germans can make any headway. Okay, we just pulled an American reinforcement shit and the balance of power has shifted drastically. The Americans have brought on three or four whole infantry divisions along with two armored divisions and um, some brigades of um, uh, some British divisions. As you can see here in the south, we have the 80th and the 26th being strung along, threatening the um, pretty sparsely defended line here um, just southeast of Baston. 79th is going to come and um, help plug that. Hopefully they can get to that crossing before the Americans can cross it. And then uh, here to the south of Baston, the 4th Armored um, is coming in line, or I shouldn't say in line, but along the road in column threatening um, the Lair Panzer Division. And then up in the north, um, this is where the two uh, brigades for the British Division have come down, helping secure this crossing should the 106th uh, be forced back. And then we've got the 3rd Armored, or at least two, um, I'm not sure, these are probably brigades, um, supporting the 1st Infantry Division, and then we've got the 75th strung out here, uh, protecting the flank of the uh, American armored units there. And we got a whole mess of other uh, reinforcements coming in the second chip pull. So, don't know. It's it's too early to say that the German offensive has petered out, but they're vastly running out of opportunities uh, to make more headway. Now, they have captured that third... Um, Victory Point, or Victory City. Uh, it's a shame they didn't do that before the start of the turn. They would have had more reinforcements. Um, another big thing, next turn, at uh, the beginning of the fifth turn, um, the Allies will bring on a lot more artillery. They've got uh, three artillery coming in, two that could be supported between two divisions uh, for the Third Corps. Um the 7th Corps, and the 8th Corps. So they have a whole mess of artillery coming on. So their uh, defensive power will be up, so will their offensive power. The next chip pulled was an American movement slash combat, and the Americans, or the Allies, I should say now, uh, with the British on the board, have opted for move, um, mostly to exploit the opening here uh, that the Germans left, um, fairly unprotected. So we had the 26th move up uh, to Edelbrook um, to protect the um, flank of the 80th and a appears 
Yep, there's just that sole uh, combat command of the 10th, but that's occupied uh, whilst the delay marker is actually taken off now. So it's an asset that can be placed next turn. So that is completely opened up here, um, threatening uh, the two ge uh, German divisions um, in and around Bastogne. Even though the Germans probably will be able to pull up um, and occupy the ridge here, uh, it'll be interesting what I wind up doing with the Germans because the, the defense here is kind of tenuous. The uh, combat command, the A combat command of the 4th Division, was able to move through because the zones of control don't extend into woods. Um, so that also continues to uh, complicate the supply here. Now the Germans should be able to still trace supply up through uh, Hoyflies should the uh, road be cut here on the heights of this ridge, but it's increasingly becoming tenuous, so they'll probably have to pull back. Uh, elsewhere, um, more conservative moves. Um, didn't concentrate the 84th. Uh, they spread out, uh, also threatening um, the Panzer units here. And then we had the a um, detachment of the 3rd finally eliminate that paratrooper unit. Uh, and push forward, and then we had the 75th along with the uh, 7th Armor and I remember down here, 3rd Armor move up, pressing up against the 10th SS, 12th SS, and the 3rd Panzer Grenadier just north of Malmody. So the Americans are have contained the bulge at this point. Um, it's much shorter and a little much squared, actually, kind of reminds me of the salient. Not necessarily in scale, but uh, the size of uh, Kursk. Uh, historically, the Germans were able to get to just out of Silas, Silas uh, just east of the Meuse. Um, and that was probably around the same time, December 22nd, 23rd. Um, they reached their apex, I know. It's either somewhere in the late, the mid to late 20s. Um, the 22nd through like the 26th or 27th. Anyway, they clearly didn't have that breakout moment, but um, they have taken a fair amount of casualties, but I, they may be in a position where they can absorb a lot uh, before they're pushed back. So even though the game didn't um, replicate their full breakout, um, they still have a lot of ground um, to fight with and to, to give up. Um, so... We'll go ahead and uh, finish out the turn. Uh, we got a couple more chits to pull. We just have a combat and a move, um, and a combat and a move for both the British, or, I'm sorry, the Allies and the Germans to do. And then we'll see uh, where we stand at the end of turn uh, four. Utter calamity for the Germans. The Americans pulled another move chit, uh, which allowed them obviously to move all their units across the board. But in addition, any armored units that any armored units that hadn't moved um, actually get to participate in a um, round of combat. So that turned out really well, Mo mainly because the 80th uh, was able to, to cross over uh, and cut the supply to Bastogne. It's not actually cut yet because we have to draw a supply chit for the Germans, um, but unless they are able to do that, um, well, if that happens before they're able to move or attack, it will be disastrous for them. In addition, because of the arraying of the units, um, any adverse results in terms of retreating for the, the units here um, would essentially, they, they can't retreat anywhere uh, because they you cannot end a retreat adjacent to an enemy unit. And if you can't go more than two, you have to go two and not be adjacent to an enemy unit, or you need to go to. Um, and if you can't do that, then you suffer the losses in place. So the Lair um, Panzer Division has just been utterly shattered. Both of the um, Kampf group, Kampf group uh, have now been reduced to battalions, and their Panzer Grenadiers now, they're no longer um, considered a, an armored force. Um, the assumption is that most of their tanks have been knocked out. Uh, so this is pretty devastating. Um, the lair, I don't know if these can be repaired up. Um, I have to double check. 
uh, in the rule book. But the second, they're going to have a hard time extricating themselves. Now, the 79th and the 15th, they can come and help uh, shore up the line here. But this spells disaster for the Germans uh, in the south. Elsewhere, uh, the Americans didn't move much. Um, the 1st Division is preparing to cross uh, the, the Amblieve. Um, so they're basically, they're threatening the flank here. So the Germans are probably going to have to pull back their, um, panzer divisions, um, to Malmedy and then redeploy from there to counter the, the growing American threats. So I think suffice to say right now, the German offensive, uh, has petered out. They have some infantry divisions going on. Uh, the next two turns uh, but in terms of firepower they have everything on the board that they have most of the panzer units uh, they have in reserve say the ninth and that's really the only panzer division they have in reserve they have like i said the 15th the panzer grenadiers they're going to be used uh they're bouncing with interior lines and trying to stave off the american assault the first ss um Kampfgruber here needs to be pulled back too because it's pretty vulnerable. So at this point, that is, well, not quite the end of turn um, four. I'll go ahead and pull the last uh, chit, which is German. And it has to be a combat chit because they've already pulled their move chit. So I will go ahead and uh, see what they can do and how that impacts uh, the situation, if at all. Well, these fascists just can't catch a break, which I guess is not the worst thing in the world. Um, the only major attack that they launched was against the 30th. Um, the straight one-to-one -one attack with the engineer uh, modifier and the artillery helping, and uh, they rolled a one. Another one for the Germans. Uh, so they took a casualty on the Kampfgruppe for the 116th. So as it stands now, um, the Germans are imperiled. Um, again, we've got Bastong, sort of a reverse situation uh, than what occurred historically. The two panzer divisions uh, nearly enveloped. It'll be hard to break them out. Uh, they're going to scramble and try to set up a defensive line here. Probably be able to shift. Um, this panzer unit down there as well. And they also have to brew, um, be careful of the brewing uh, counteroffensive, potential counteroffensive, the firepower up here. So the Germans are definitely going to need to move uh, back to Malmedy and uh, shore up their lines. So we'll call that quits for part two. Um, hopefully we can get the whole playthrough done at least, hopefully no more than two more parts. I feel like the next couple of turns will go by um, more quickly as the initiative shifts uh, uh, over to the Americans as they push back. So at this point, safe to say that Bastong will fall shortly, um, but we'll see how tenacious the German defense of uh, Heufelis and um, St. Fifth are. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.